round pick for the Philadelphia Flyers even knows the Sixers are going to be garbage this year. That's rough, man. That is absolutely rough. All right. So with that being said, let's let's hop into uh, C C Colombia C C Caribe right now. If you do keep putting up this Colombian flag, I'm gonna keep singing that. Um, stop putting Colombian flags in the comment sections. Uh, but real quick here with the Philadelphia 76ers. With that being said, um, obviously we talked about it yesterday, and anyone watched my full thoughts on. The comments by Joel Embiid um, yesterday. Well, first off, that was just absolutely rough. Uh, but from my understanding, uh, Joel Embiid was talking to... He just signed on to LeBron's broadcasting group. I don't know. I, I guess Joel has a uh, a future, or he's trying to get into the entertainment business, which obviously, you know, if you're an athlete, like, well, why not, <laughs> really? You already got the clout, so why not just do it, right? All right, so Joel Embiid on an interview, he's part of this platform now with for LeBron's broadcasting group, um, trying to get entertainment. And we talked about it yesterday. Joel Embiid puts out that the video and in the interview, pretty much saying, "I want to win a championship, whether it be in Philly or somewhere else." And we're all kind of still reacting to it. And the rumors now are obviously creeping up. So obviously now it's is Joel Embiid out? Like is Joel Embiid on the trade market? Is there a legitimate trade market? Does Joel Embiid really want out? Like, if you're Joel Embiid, like, you can't really fault him for wanting to be out. But what are what's going on exactly? And I think that because of what's been going on with the end of the season, James Harden's shenanigans, I think, like, we're all on edge, which is understandable. Completely understandable. Um, but at, it, it, at the end of the day, I don't think Joel Embiid will be gone. But I do think that if nothing happens this year, I think that you could be looking at it next year. The fact of the matter is, me personally... The reality situation is that we are stuck. We're stuck. You can't improve upon the wing depth of this team. That's the main the main concern for me right now is the wing depth of this basketball team. You can't really improve upon that. James Harden made up his mind. And we've seen NBA superstars. We're probably done with that situation. Dude, we're talking about D'Anthony Melton starting. This man is inconsistent as fuck. We're going to have him as a starter every game? Nobody wants to hear this. And, like, yeah, like, a part of me does not It gets intrigued by, like, Nick Nurse and what he can bring to this team because I think he's a great mind. But, like, what's Nick Nurse going to do with this roster? This man was so successful off of this over his time in, 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 uh, in, in Toronto. He has none of that here in Philly. None of that. So there's a real concern here. Now, earlier today on 97.5 The Fanatic, Daryl Morey was on with the Anthony Gargano show. So I'm going to post that up here, and we're going to listen to it. We're going to react to it together. So this is very important. There's a lot of telling things in this interview. So this is Daryl Morey today on the Anthony Gargano Midday Show on 97.5 The Fanatic. Let's give it a listen. Good morning, uh, Eel. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Uh, as you said, lots, lots of questions out there. I've been, I've been uh, trying to do something like this, but uh, the great Dave Shaw has been holding me back. <laughs> wanted, wanted, wanted us to get through summer league and all the, you know, all the uh, July, you know, comings and goings. I know, I know, I know. It's funny. Uh, Dave's been inundated. The great Schaller's been in a day because we're like, we need to talk to the eel. We need answers, Daryl. So let, let's start with it. Right? Let's start and let's start with James because Harden's really the most pressing. <laughs> All That's rough, man. It's just a break in the audio. It's just programming. The civil authorities have issued a required monthly test Dude, for all of New Jersey Daryl beginning Morey. at 10.50 a.m. and ending at 12.50 p.m. <laughs> the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management is conducting a test What's of the emergency alert thing? system. Had this been an actual emergency, the attention That's signal you have just heard would have been followed by official information or instructions. This concludes the test of the emergency alert system. And it's funny because they they have no idea it's even going. How can you? 
I'm sure Trina's ah. working on it. I thought I thought they go. gave nah. you. I thought by him opting in, it really helped you. I thought that was great for us. Well, I think James and James is a very good player, and right now, unfortunately, he does prefer to be somewhere else. I do have a long relationship with him. Yeah, I'm attempting to honor that. Um, but the reality is, if we do look at a trade, we're going to. It's going to be for one of two things. It's either going to be for a player who continues to help us be right there, like we were last year, uh, up three two on on you know one of the best teams in the East, the Celtics. Obviously, we didn't get it done, but James was a big part of why we got it to three two. Um, or we're gonna do it for something where we get enough, uh, you know, draft picks and things like that in a deal, such that we can then turn those into a player who is as it can be a running mate with Joel as well. But if we don't get, you know, either a very good player or something that we can turn into a very good player, then we're just not going to do it. And so, and if James were to turn his mind around, uh, we would all be thrilled. You heard Joel's comments about that, but at this moment, he does prefer to be traded and we're attempting to honor that. Yeah. Darryl, what, what, can I ask you, this is now three times in a row that he's wanted to be, wanted to be, you know him, and now he wants out of here. And I look in here and I go, look, you know, listen, Clippers are a good team, and I, I get it, but this is a good team. If you really want to win, what what's the biggest issue with him, especially since, I, you know, I, I think you guys have treated him fairly. Yeah, look, he, he was wishing for a different situation contractually. Um, and I think that's been the main desire for uh, looking for a new situation. And, yeah. um, you know, at this point, look, if we can do something that uh, is win-win and helps the Sixers, uh, then we will look at it. And if we can't, then, then we won't. Well, I, you know, listen, I, I think you've, you've handled it well in this. Uh, Cause I, one of the, the, one of the things that I was worried about is that, you didn't want to, you got in next summer is the big free agent class. And to go all in with a Harden and that kind of contract that he wanted, you know, at his age, listen, terrific ball player. I, I got respect for him the way I thought he tailored his game a lot last year. He played really unselfishly, but you, you couldn't go that kind of financial commitment knowing where Joel is with this at his age and, Going forward, you got to be able to keep those options open to to build with this team because this team still, you know, we're, you. I don't have to tell you, you got to get out of the second round. I mean, people are frustrated as all get out. No, I know, and look, I I live here in Center City. I talk to fans all the time. I talk to them on Twitter. They're very passionate. Yeah. They give me they give me the business. Everyone <laughs> should know that I care. Uh, I care as much as them. I feel their pain. Look, I mean, losing the way we did and, and the fact that it's happened over and over. Um, look, I do nothing else but try to figure out how to uh, get this team over the hump. And the reality is sometimes that involves some pain and not doing things that are short-term thinking. Like, we we need to make sure that Joel Embiid, who's one of the best players on earth, uh, has a top running mate. Uh, that could be Maxi taking a leap forward this year. You know, Coach Nurse, I know, is very excited about his conversations with Joel and how he's going to use him. I still can't believe how he keeps getting better, and I think Coach Nurse is very excited to continue to do that. But we know that we need more talent, whether that's James returning or what we turn James into. Uh, and I would just say to the fans, I would, you know, obviously right now things aren't looking perfect. You have to squint to sort of figure out how it's all going to work. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, try not to focus too much on the roster in July. People are focused on, oh, you have too much of this or not enough of that. Oh, uh, we're going to talk about the bigs. <laughs> <laughs> try to focus on how the roster looks during the season. And frankly, we do have a lot of, like, put up or shut up fans, which I don't mind that say, like, the regular season doesn't matter. Well, 
if that's the case, then let's focus on the roster as we go into the playoffs, how we're playing, how we're improving then. Not really worry too much about the roster in July. Well, it's funny, right? Because I, I'm looking at what you're doing, and I'm trying to get into your brain, all right? Because, listen, the one thing you never have to convince us of, I know you're trying to win. I, believe me, I, I know what kind of competitor you are, and I know the organization wants to win. I've been around you guys. I know what's in your heart. So I'm trying to figure out what's the plan, all right? And this is where people go, Look, it's been a rough, and I don't have to go through chapter and verse. I do want to touch on the Boston series, but I don't need to go through chapter and verse. You know it's been a rough go. So I'm trying to think, all right, is it a two-year? And I just come up with this, that it's more of a two-year plan. Knowing what's going to happen next summer, knowing that you could have two slots going into that big, heavily free agent class, I, I'm looking at your bigs, and you have an overload of bigs, and I'm going... You don't have wings, and it's not, again, the roster's not set. You also need backup. You need another backup point guard. And I'm looking, and I'm going, this has to be a more of a two-year plan when you're looking at next year's free agent. Am I am I on to something there? Well, I personally wouldn't call it a two-year plan because, you know, I think Joel's in his prime, and we can't really be, you know, worried. But I do, in my job, have to keep an eye to the future. And Obviously, we've lost some depth this year. We were one of the deepest teams in the league for all the good that did for us. But a lot of the guys who didn't play for us last year, when they played, we actually played some of our best ball, someone like a house. We are excited what a Pat Beverly brings to this team. We're very excited about what Coach Nurse brings. But a lot of the depth we lost, if we had done something to uh, bring them back, um, it would have hurt our ability to compete down the road. So what we're attempting to do is have the best team possible this year, but also uh, have the ability that if we get into a next season situation to be a very unique team with the most cap room of a team that's as good as us, that's a very unique situation to have right as so the new CBA really kicks in next year. The new CBA next year is going to put massive constraint downward on salaries in the league. So us being the only team with a top player that, that a player can join is going to put us in a very unique situation. So I wouldn't call it a two-year plan. It's just more we're trying to win next this season coming up, but we have to keep an eye on how we're going to compete going forward as well. Yeah, and I guess I guess when I say to you, we're talking to Sixers President GM Daryl Morey on the Comcast Business Hotline. And I guess when I tell you, it's when I say to your plan, it's more of you, you wouldn't do anything drastic to disrupt your freedom after next season. Yeah, especially not when, again, we have like, we have players on the roster that we think can step up a Springer, uh, a Beverly. We like what he's going to add. We like what House can do. Again, he had very good key moments in the playoffs this year. Uh, he brings that athleticism that we need. Um, the additions of, you know, Paul Reed going into another season. We like what Mo Bamba can bring us in his versatility. Um, you mentioned you were going to bring it up. People are yeah, focused I, on center. center. Yeah. People are annoyed that I'm sort of, uh, <laughs> I don't, I only joke about it with our fan base because the, you know, they sort of can't make up their mind. They're sort of like uh, obsessed with, who Joel's backup was for years. And now that we're actually adding players that we think can shore up that position, now they're bothered. But it's actually all in good fun. Look, most of these most of these bigs we brought in are multi-position. They're not just single position. A lot of them are two ways uh, or future bets that we made years ago that actually help our flexibility going forward. Uh, Petrosev. So, yeah, yeah Petrosev would be an example of that. So, And Petrosev... You know, again, when I talk multi-position, he doesn't play center in the top league away from the NBA. He played he played a different position mm -hmm. than center. So long story short, look, it's all in fun that we have 25 centers or whatever people <laughs> want to say or 138, like I think Joel just said uh, on Twitter. Yeah. Um, but the reality is these are multi-position guys who are versatile. They're, they're either spacing fives or guys who play different positions or two ways. 
So at the end of the day, Paul Reed is a core, a core big. We're excited what a Mo Bamba can bring us. Uh, and obviously Joel Embiid. Uh, let's hope people are okay with counting him as a center. Yeah, as long as he wants to win here and not somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, so he had some fun with that yesterday. That's, that was a very Joel day yesterday. You know what the problem is? Count. You know what the problem is, though? With the fan base is in no mood to be trolled. You know, like the fan base is going, dude, stop busting my balls and go win and beat the Celtics. That's what. All right. That's I think that's what we needed there. We got we got the gist of what we needed there. Um, All right. So I I wrote down some comments there. So, again, that was Daryl Morey on today's 97.5 Midday Show with Andy Gargano and the Tunis. Um, So, first off, a lot of words, a lot of comments that I heard during the Ben Simmons show. You know, we're not going to trade away James Harden for anything until we can get some valuable assets back that we feel that we can flip for a player that can help Joel Embiid. Uh, it's all the same things that we heard during the Ben Simmons stuff. And look, at that time, you were able to find a way to get yourself James Harden with a disgruntled Ben Simmons. That was impeccable. But like I've mentioned before, to strike lightning again, <sighs> For another season, <sighs> dude, we're asking for a lot, like literally a lot. Daryl wants draft picks, like young assets that not a lot of teams are willing to give away, especially for a player who, number one, like Jane, like Anthony Gargano mentioned, like there's an attitude. There's like a whole step stipulation when it comes to James Harden. He asked out. He forced his way out of Houston. He forced his way out of Brooklyn, and now he's trying to force his way out of Philadelphia. Dude, like that's not a good look. That looks like a bad look. And like you kind of look at like the Houston one. Okay, star player wants to try to win a championship in his older years. You kind of understand. He took it too far, but you kind of understand. The Brooklyn situation, man's on his own. The the idea of winning a championship dwindled once KD's hurt. Kyrie doesn't want to take a shot. Um, he wants to make anti-Semitic uh, comments. So now James Harden's like, well, I'm on an island here. There's no point here. Philadelphia wants me. Daryl Morey's there. I, Joel Embiid looks like a fun, lot of fun to play with. He forces his way out. But this Sixer situation, you, you, you can't justify. He wants more mo more money for what? You listen, we didn't get the job done. You said it. The plan for everyone was to win a championship, and that didn't happen. What do you want more money for? You made your money. Fuck it. You want to make money. You told everyone, including yourself, you wanted to win a championship. So now you're going to force your way out. You wanted to play in Houston. I should just tell you everything. This man wanted to play in Houston and have no shot of winning anything this year. It, it, it just, it, it just kind of is what it is, man. I still can't believe he's he, he, he he's he's mad over this contract. You obviously heard it from 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 Daryl. There's an emphasis this year on Tyrese Maxey. He's going to be a big focal point of this team. That should be a lot of fun to watch. Um, I, I just don't know how you're going to get rid of James Harden. I, I really don't know, man. Um, you hear a lot about this two-year plan th uh, throughout the interview as well. Um, and Daryl's going to play it safe. He's not going to move James for just moving him to sake of it. Um, and obviously next year's free agency class is going to be pretty good. And so could the Sixers be eyeing it up that? I don't think you have time to waste. Like if you're going to punt the season away, just rebuild. We're going to bring in free agents here. I'm sorry. That shit doesn't work anymore. Building a team through free agency, solely off free agency, uh, it, it, that shit don't work. That shit does not work, man. You know, Daryl's making fun of the centers, which, you know, he's like, there. a lot of them play two ways. Okay, Daryl. They're still slow. And where the fuck is the shooting? You're really going to sell his Daniel house. This man sat here. And so does Daniel House. Are you kidding me? This man is an enigma on offense. Yes, he's athletic. Yes, he can run. He might hit you a three once every 30 or 40 attempts. He's going to sell us Daniel House at the wing. 
The Anthony Mel and Daniel Hoss at, the, at your wings, ladies and gentlemen. Championship, here we fucking come. It, 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 he made the joke about, you know, Sixers fans uh, were, were complaining when uh, they didn't like who I had behind Joel Embiid. Well, now that I solidified that. Dude, we wanted one solidified guy behind Joel Embiid. Not five of them. <laughs> they played up both ways. So what? You're going to start Paul Reed at the three? And you're make Paul Reed defend guys like DeMar DeRozan? Come on, Daryl. Stop, stop treating us like we're idiots. Sometimes you really do. And you only think Argano's last point there? Like, you're trolling us at the worst time. This fan base has been through so much shit, through so many characters before you. Like, it's like Voldemort. The Sixers' GM position is like Voldemort. Or not Voldemort, the dark arts teacher or whatever. I, I, it's been so long I watched Harry Potter. I'm sick and tired of all this. That's it. That's the that's the, the premise here. Sixers tired of it, man. I'm sick. I'm tired of it. Sixers fans are tired of it. 